Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So last week uh, I did an advanced offensive tutorial video it's trying to show you some things about the half spins and holding X with L2 and I got a lot of comments just people that didn't even know that was a thing. Uh, so what I wanted to do was do something on the defensive side because there are some kind of game mechanics and whatnot that can definitely help your game. But more importantly, I talk about using um, really aggressive strategies, um, which is always the best. But when you're you know first learning the game, you know you're in the you know middle divisions and whatnot. I preach to use you know safe play, you know passive neutral zone trap, and that's because. In this game, giving up an odd man rush and whatnot is extremely devastating because stopping the backdoor pass and things like that is just almost impossible. So what I want to do is show you what happens once you've kind of hit your plateau. You know, you, you're not a bad player. You're in that middle. I would say div four and above maybe, uh, and you're just kind of plateaued defensively. You know, you, you win some games, you lose some. Uh, the things that I've changed specifically to really kind of take my game to the next level, uh, I find that I'm in, I'm in a lot more games against extremely good players. And it's just from the way I play defense. And aggressiveness is always the best play just because the less time and space you give your opponent, you know, the better opportunities you're going to cause turnovers and things like that and less time they have with the puck. And my talent attack has just been through the roof this year. Um, but defensively, I changed some things. And uh, I'm going to show you guys how to use the 1-2-2 red specifically and what you should be doing when defending the rush the second you lose the puck. Uh, some minor tweaks that I've done over the last two weeks that has really, really helped my game. And I think it's going to help yours too. So before we go any further, guys though make sure you subscribe to the channel uh again daily nhl content is my full-time gig so i'd really appreciate the subscription as well as a like on the video if you did enjoy the content all right let's get into the advanced defensive tips for 1v1 so we need to first discuss the strategies that i use normally so again there are a few that will change depending on your opponent i'm going to describe which ones that you want to change so i use the one two two aggressive and i'll explain why in a little bit again i find that this four check allows you to have one guy just in pressuring the puck and then the way that you play or the way that i'm going to recommend you play especially using the one two two red uh neutral zone is to stop that first read pass. The more often that you can stop that first read that your opponent has, the more often you're going to turn over. It's basically like a coverage sack in the NFL. If you have blanket defense uh, along the passing lanes, you know eventually you're just gonna they're gonna turn the puck over because your AI is close enough uh, pressuring the puck. Because I don't really recommend that you use the one guy in tight. I think that that would be a, that's not always uh, the best route. But again, I'm going to explain what I mean in in this video. The neutral zone, 1-2-2 two, two, red. This will only change if you're playing someone who is only carrying the puck with one player. So what I mean by that is he's not passing out of the zone. He's literally taking one player, weaving back and forth constantly, not changing uh, or not not passing at all east and west. That you want to switch to a 1-4 because that makes him stop. And anytime that you're going east and west, the 1-4 is, in my opinion, the best way to stop that. Uh, and the one two two red kind of gets eaten by it a little bit. So just keep that in mind. Trap and four check. Again, I go full four check. Uh, once you see what I mean by how to play defense with this, this strategy set it's going to take a lot of practice you're going to give up a lot of two on ones you're going to give up a lot of breakaways early on but again i think this is the way that you're going to break that plateau and get into the upper echelon um and you know and really improve your play if you've watched my other videos in the past i've gotten tons of comments that you know just having a strategy in general uh, especially on offense whether it's behind the net things like that will improve your play no matter what so once you know what to look for on defense as opposed to just chasing the puck carrier uh, you're going to improve your play Offensive pressure. I leave this at standard because too often uh, the offensive zone pressure is it's what dictates your defenseman from jumping up in the rush. And too often or not that if there's a turnover or a shot block or you know just kind of a puck battle in the neutral zone, if you have anything more higher than standard, you're, I find my defensemen are just flying through the neutral zone, and that's what leads to a lot of two on one. So leave that at standard. Defensive pressure. Now in my own zone, I love using high pressure. And the only thing that will change, um, or what, the only time that will change, is if your opponent is refusing to use his defenseman to shoot the puck. So if they pass it back to the point, that's fine. But if they beeline straight down low again to try and set up, you know, those cheesy cross ice forces, things like that. If they're only doing that, switch from high pressure to protect net and keep it on collapsing. Tight point is a good strategy, but it opens up so much. And again, I'm trying to help, you know, the, the average player. I'm not talking about the pro guys or anything like that. I think tight point is a really good strategy, again, because... 
the the more aggressive you are, the less time and space they have. But I think for you know the, the viewers that I have and the demographic that I have, um, I, I want to show you guys collapsing because again, it keeps you uh, from kind of getting that middle portion of the ice completely empty, and it's it's super dangerous to do that. Okay. Uh, other than that, the three on three offense just passive, whatever. Quick breakout. This is an important one to take a look at as well, guys. Close support is the best if they are super aggressive and you find yourself being stuck when you're when you're carrying the puck out and there's just no passing lanes, uh, there's no one to pass to, and you keep turning the puck over because you get pressured. The reason for that is because you've got it on leave zone early or something else, and the guys that you know you have less options on the pass and you, there's just, there's nowhere to go to. So. Change it to close support if you're getting pressure to hemmed in your own zone a lot. All right, so now let's jump into the actual plays and some things mechanically that I think are really going to help your game. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is using R1 or the defensive skill stick to actually get a bit of a burst when you're trying to uh, get back in a play or even just rush the puck. Honestly, if you're not close to another player um, or you're away from their skates, I would be hitting R1, holding down R1 the second you switch to a player when rushing to the puck on pretty much every play. The reason for it is that you seem to get a bit of a boost because you're reaching out, your player's making an animation, and it doesn't stop their skating stride. So you're going to get that extra bit of reach, and I find that especially when trying to get back on a rush, it works a ton by holding out the defensive skill stick and just you know skating down the ice. It's not really uh, the prettiest looking animation, but it's something that you can take advantage of, and you'll see it right here. The, the amount of times that this situation happens here where there's a step up or something at the blue line and you're trying to get back to defend to play watch what happens when I hold down R1 and I just get a big boost going down and uh, to get back and this happens at any point you can do this in the offensive zone anytime that there's a loose puck and you're trying to get there first holding down R1 towards the puck will actually it seems give you a bit of a burst all right now let's get into the nitty-gritty of actually using the 122 red and how to actually you know stop passing plays and make it a lot harder, especially breaking out of the zone on your opponent. So the whole thing is predicated on watching the first read of a passing play. And this is going to be tough to teach because I, you know, instinctively I can't just, you know, show you guys or get you guys to look where I'm looking, but I'm going to show you what I do. And then hopefully while you're playing, you'll start picking up on it. You need to stop looking so much at the puck carrier. Again, on offense, I say this a ton. The more that you stare at the puck, the less offense you're going to be able to create because your opponent can take away passing lanes because you're not even looking at them. Same goes in reverse. So your opponent probably has one quick read and that should be your first read. And it usually it's pretty blatant. It's pretty obvious. And you'll see here exactly what I do to cause a turnover and a scoring chance because again, I just take away that first lane and if he even if it doesn't if he doesn't force the pass to the guy that I'm covering he's going to stop for a half second because he knows that it's not open and that's where your AI or if you switch quickly to the guy pressuring the puck you can really cause a turnover so right here is a perfect example Here's another perfect example, guys. You want to be switching to the player that is the first read because, again, the player that is looking to pass the puck, he is going to look at that passing, to at that player, at that lane. And if he sees you manually controlling... More often than not, they're not going to force the pass regardless. And again, it just causes so many issues because if they're stuck trying to find a read and you take away that first one, the guy that you have forechecking because you're running the one 2 aggressive full forecheck, he's on the puck carrier immediately. And that is how you can cause these, again, I'm going to call them coverage sacks because that's essentially what they are. So you're switching to the first read immediately. And watch what happens here. I'm not even pressuring him with my player. I'm making sure that the passing lane that he first looks at, the only guy that is available that he thinks that he can pass to without forcing it blindly is covered. And look what happens. He runs out of room and it causes a turnover all by my all by himself. I didn't even pressure him with the guy with the puck. It's all about covering that first passing lane. All right, so we've talked about using the 1-2-2 red and quickly switching every time that, you know, you're trying to defend a passing lane, the first read. That's the best way to do it. Again, when they go to pass, once you've gotten a step, they've, you've been beaten, switch immediately to the next closest player with the puck, and you want to cover that lane. Now what happens when you're in your own zone? So when you get a player in this situation specifically, okay, he is going down. He's waiting to be pressured by that that low, that left-hand side defenseman. He's waiting to be pressured. What I do to stop myself from running around is I take the player covering the farthest player in this sequence available. So that would be your far side right winger because his he's in charge of covering that far top side defenseman, and he's just not going to be able to get that pass through to really do anything. So what I do is instead of pulling the guy that's supposed to be covering the guy down low, and eventually that could lead to a cross-ice wide-open one-timer, 
I bring my top side defense, man. You can do that by holding down R2, using the right stick and aiming it to the top right. You can actually manually select your players by doing that, holding down R2, and then switching uh, by by pressing the right thumbstick in whatever direction the actual player you're trying to select is. It's a little finicky, but once you get good at it, uh, it's going to help you out considerably, and this is an exact instance as to why to do that. And this is the last kind of concept I want to show you guys. Again, I, it's very difficult to show you specific plays on defense because it's, it's hockey. It's happening so fast, but I'm trying to teach you just concepts and reads so that while plays developing, you'd be like, okay, I need to, you know, I need to switch off a player and whatnot, because I feel like the biggest detriment to, you know, the the lower, less, the, the below average player is that they hold on to the player that they're using way too long, especially in a defensive zone. I feel like not nearly enough players, okay, I'm out of position with this guy, I need to switch to someone else to now cover and make up for the fact that I pulled my guy way out of position. So look at this right here. Again, I, I've, this guy's gotten in the zone, he's gotten a step on me, but I realized that he's beaten me, the second that that happens, I switch and I go and cover the first and the closest passing, the most dangerous option. The more that you do that, again, it's going to result in a lot fewer goals given up. You need to be okay with switching immediately because once even a half step um, you know, around your defender, you know, the, the guy that's rushing down the zone, how many times do you just, you know, just keep skating with him in the hopes that eventually maybe you'll catch him or eventually he'll run into you, things like that. You need to switch off and get out of the guy that you're chasing with because that's what results in just way too many open goals. All right, guys, so I hope that these defensive tips help. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below, and I will be doing a lot more tip videos throughout this month now as, a again, I, I daily hut coverage, obviously. I want to make sure you guys have the most up-to-date info on all of the cards to get it released immediately market tips all that so make sure you subscribe for daily nhl content there but i definitely want to help out uh you know my subscriber base and help them improve their game just as i'm improving mine i'm only like a top end division two guy and I, uh this year i'm getting division one it's extremely difficult the guys that are in division one are just some of the best they have a shot at hut champs every single week um so again it's uh something that i've got to get better at as well and while i'm learning these things from other pro players that i get to you know watch and you know i'm friends with a lot of them from covering esports events uh I'm going to relay a lot of that information to you guys. So let me know what you think in the comments section down below, and I'll see you next time.